Hello viewers, welcome to this video lecture series on analysis and design of algorithms. In this session, I shall explain you the different steps that typically goes through the design and analysis of an algorithm. So here, you can remember these steps with this diagram. The very first step is understanding the problem. One should be completely knowing what the problem is. And to write a good algorithm, you need to think of all the instances of that problem. So basically an input is what an input to an algorithm is an instance of the problem only. So you try to collect the various instances for that problem. So you should see that all typical types of instances of the problem should work for that algorithm. So a good algorithm is not the one that is working most of the time. Sometimes an algorithm works for most of the inputs but it fails for an input which is falling in the boundary condition. So that you need to take care. So a good algorithm is one which is going to work successfully on all legitimate inputs. Then we have in the second step, actually in the second step itself you need to look into these three. First one is decide on computational means, then exact versus approximate solving algorithm design techniques. So when your algorithm is there, at the time of designing an algorithm also you should see that this algorithm if it is getting converted into a code, on which machine are you running this code? So what is the device? What are the specifications of the device? Is it having the required uh, hardware? Is it having the required software? So these things you need to check here. As long as uh, present devices are concerned, we don't have to worry much also. Speed and memory is not at all a problem for us. Definitely memory we need to think only when we have to process a huge volume of data. Sometimes you are solving a problem wherein you are taking care of a very huge volume of data. That time you need to think that yes, whether my device is able to store that much data or not. Only then. But earlier there was a problem. So in initial days, even there were systems which were able to perform jobs which can be executed sequentially only. So those algorithms, they used to call it as sequential algorithms. So only few systems were available wherein they were able to execute the algorithms which can operate concurrently. So we call those algorithms as the parallel algorithms. Now at present we are not having this kind of issue. All types of algorithms can be executed on our machines. So that is about the computational means and exact versus approximate solving is what. So here for a problem are you coming out with an exact solution or with an approximate solution. So uh, this definitely will uh, make us a little doubtful because why we have to go for an approximate solution. Normally we have to provide an exact solution only for a problem. Why this point is taken is still if you look into the problems that are already solved extracting the square roots okay is an approximate solution. You can just relook into this and find out why this is an approximate solution not an exact solution. So these kind there are several solutions which are already existing but those are not the exact solutions. So here also you need to decide whether you are going for an exact solution or for an approximate solution. The third one is you need to decide on the technique that as I said in my previous video we have different design techniques. So which technique are you going to use? See, we have several techniques, design, uh, divide and conquer, decrease and conquer, backtracking, recursive, greedy approach, branch and bound. Still designing an algorithm becomes a challenging task because sometimes these techniques may not be applicable to the problem which you are solving. So that time you need to think of combining several techniques and try to solve the problem. The next point is designing an algorithm and data structures. So this is also a very important uh, thing to be taken care of while designing an algorithm. You are definitely designing an algorithm but at the same time which data structure are you selecting that is very important. Whether are you selecting a linked list, are you selecting a stack. For some of the problems the linked list data structure may take a longer time for an algorithm to run compared to arrays. So you have to pick carefully the data structure. Actually there was a book which is titled as algorithms plus data structures equal to programs. This was the book which is having a title like this, algorithms plus data structures equal to programs. What this book is conveying that you cannot separate algorithms and data structures. If you are designing an efficient algorithm, then you have to see that you are selecting an appropriate data structure also in that algorithm. Methods of specifying an algorithm. So in what way you will specify an algorithm? Previous uh, algorithm with the GCD of two numbers, in, wherein it was mentioned in description. Okay, step one. Divide M and N, okay, check the remainder. If the remainder is not zero, go to step so and so. Then if the remainder is zero, go to step. So you are writing in words, you are describing that. Instead, you can use the pseudocode also. What is pseudocode? Basically, it is a 
mixture of natural language and programming language. Suppose now whatever uh, description you write, you saw for the GCD of two numbers, you can write the same thing in a pseudocode format also. Like you can write y n not equal to zero. What is that you are going to do? M modulus of n which is stored in R, n gets reassigned to M, n gets assigned to M and R is n. So these three steps are carried out repeatedly until n is not equal to 0. Once n becomes equal to 0, it comes out from this loop and it will stop. In most of the pseudocode, whatever you see for an algorithm resembles the C programming language constructs this. In C language, we have the different statements. So most of the time, those statements you can see in the pseudocode. And nowadays, uh, it is easy for anyone also to understand the pseudocode because most of us are knowing the C programming language. Even the school going students are familiar with this language. But what about uh, this uh, kind of symbols? Can we use this in the algorithm? We can use. You can use this assignment operator or you can use this arrow direction. Okay. You are writing like this, you are saying that B is assigned to A. If you are writing like this, yes, B is assigned to A, you can use. But whenever you are using the looping structures like if, while, for, definitely you are going to use the uh, opening and closing flower brace to indicate the scope of those statements. So that is a must, opening and closing flower brace. Or instead of that, you can write the begin and end also. For example, if you are writing a algorithm to swap two numbers, okay, what I can do is, I will just write down here, is it visible? So I'll write here, I'm using a temporary variable which stores the value for A is stored in uh, temp. So B gets stored in A and then temp is stored in B. So I can write the algorithm in this one. Now instead of this flower in closing this, I can use begin and end also. Fine, this is also allowed in algorithm. Or I can use instead of the assignment operator, this kind of symbol. This is also allowed. So this is an algorithm here to swap the two numbers. So that is what it is mentioned, methods of specifying an algorithm. Either you can write it in description or you can use the pseudocode. But earlier we were using the flowchart also to write an algorithm. Basically flowchart uses the geometric shapes and inside those shapes, the description of the algorithm was written. Nowadays, most of the textbooks are eliminating this kind of uh, flowchart type of uh, algorithm. They are uh, coming out with the pseudocode form of algorithm. Next is what? Proving an algorithm's correctness. Most of the time we feel that the algorithm is right. But you have to check, unless you check for all possible instances of that problem, only then you will come to know. So one example which I came across in one of the sources is, when we see a clock which is has stopped because it is not working or its battery is down, but it may show correct time twice in a day. That doesn't mean that that particular clock is working. Its solution is correct unless it is going to give you the result for all the instances of that problem. So that is how you have to prove the algorithm's correctness. Analyzing an algorithm is once again here the most important step and you are carrying out major task, major study in this subject is analyzing. So in order to analyze an algorithm, it is basically you are checking the performance of an algorithm. And to check the performance of an algorithm, you will be using the time efficiency and space efficiency. So these things you will be learning in detail in future chapters. Time efficiency or time complexity, you can say space efficiency or space complexity. Time uh, efficiency indicates the running time of an algorithm, whereas space efficiency indicates how much extra memory it is taking to get saved in the machine. So these two are the two important factors. By using these, we are going to check the performance of an algorithm. That is what we call it as analyzing an algorithm. This is a very important step here. Almost all steps are important. For every step, I am keep on telling it is very important. These are the steps definitely you need to take care while designing and analyzing an algorithm. And you can see here, whenever the algorithm's correctness is not proved, then you are going to go back to these steps. You have to think whether you have carried out these two steps correctly. Okay, this and this. And whenever you are not able to achieve the performance of an algorithm, okay, when you see that, yes, it is lacking, then once again, you need to go back these two you need to go back to these two steps. Finally, the last one is coding an algorithm. Algorithm that was written in description or in pseudocode is finally getting converted into a code using the programming language. And there, what is that? Once you 
uh, execute the program, once you run the program, once you debug the program, you eliminate all the errors, then the main thing you have to carry out is testing. You have to carry out for all possible inputs there. Though you might have checked early in the algorithm stage only, in the designing of an algorithm itself, you might have started checking with all possible inputs, but still after you execute the program, okay, then only you start giving once again all those type in type of inputs and see that whether it is giving the right output or not. So this is what we say that at the end you have to test it. Test for faults. Most of the time an algorithm is designed, it is converted into code, it is deployed, people are using, then they will come to know yes there is a fault here. See we have to check for all validations also. Now uh, as faculty members we are entering your marks in the continue portal. Once we enter the marks, at the time of entering for every question, there is a maximum marks okay, already mentioned. We have first decided what is the maximum for each question. Now for a student who are having maximum marks for a question as 7, by mistake the, the faculty has entered 8, uh, a message will pop out. And what is that message? If the faculty enters 8 because the maximum is 7, it will say marks entered are more than maximum. Then we can realize yes there is a mistake so all those errors get checked in the system itself like this there can be several instances wherein you need to check all the validations for that particular algorithm then only your you can say that yes you have successfully designed the algorithm even at uh, in the college we have the biometric system whether when we uh, because our login time is at 9 and logout is at 4 30 suppose if i log in at 9 and once again simply i'll go and log in again at 9 30 I'm just thinking that I might have forgotten to log in. So once again, I have logged in at 9.30. So now the doubt is that 9.30 is taken as login time or the 9, the first time whichever I had logged in, that is taken as the final login time or is 9.30 taken as the logout time? That is the question. So these kind of doubts might have already got solved in that system and it is already there. Just I'm telling these are the different possibilities. This is how the different steps are there that has to be carried out during the design and analysis of an algorithm this can also be a question in the examination for six to seven marks and it can be in this manner discuss the sequence of steps typically goes through in designing and analyzing the algorithm so this is what you have to do sketch this diagram and give a description of each of these steps so though this was an introductory chapter the previous the previous also the first three as i said it is in the introduction part of this subject but still all topics are very important questions can be asked from the introductory chapter also in the examination that's it in this session hope you find this session helpful if you find it helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care